video games via Unity Part 1, navigating the Unity interface. This is Michael Chug, and I'm just going to be showing people the basics and how to get around in this particular video. So when you first pull up Unity, you get a, usually this Unity Project Wizard with usually the option to open a project or to create a new project. Go ahead and click Create a New Project, and inside of there, choose a location for where you want your project to be, and then you need to create a folder that can be within. And I'm just going to call this the sample project. Now, when you first create a new project, you can actually import a whole bunch of like packages of stuff into the project. But you can do it at any time. And for the sake and purposes of this navigating the interface, I'm not going to bring in any. Just I'm going to start with just a blank screen and work from there. OK, so when you first get into the project, it'll, you'll have some type of layout. Typically, it will look something like this, or something like this when you first bring it in. I typically just use like this for a layout. You can always change the layouts in this top left hand, top right hand corner. You can save your own personal layouts if you like a certain layout better. I usually do. I usually kind of like having a, a project folder down here. You can move these different folders around. You can even make them like a freestanding one, apart from everything else, or have it next to something. So I usually like to have the layout something like this. I also usually bring in the console. These are all the different windows that Unity can have. And you can also, there's, these are all the ones that comes with Unity. I usually also bring the console in and put it at the bottom. So I have a layout that's something to the extent like this. Now, to navigate inside Unity, let's say you've got some stuff, you can use the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and zoom out. You can use the right mouse button will let you look around. And if you click something with the left click and you press F, you can focus in on that particular object. Holding Alt will let you uh, go and left click will allow you to look around an object. So, once again, let's zoom in, look around, F to focus on something, and holding Alt and left click to look around something. Those are the most utilities I use to navigate around within Unity. I believe... Oops. So within inside the scene, this is the scene view, is just where all your game objects live in a particular scene. Um, game objects are like this camera one that I have in here and the cube that I just recently brought in. Now, every every time you select an object, you'll see the hierarchy will switch for which thing you've selected. So you can just click on the objects to select them or you can select them within the hierarchy itself. Now, an empty game object, this little guy right here, has nothing attached to it. It's just a blank game object. Now, every game object has to have what's called a transform component attached to it. And that transform component maintains its position, rotation, and scale values with inside Unity. The best example of this with this cube, you can just uh, click this rotate button, and I mean scale button, you can rescale it, you can rotate it, or rotate it on just one axis by clicking that particular axis, or you can move it around by clicking one of the axes and just moving that particular axis. Now, so every single one of these game objects have what's called components attached to them. Com components do a series of different things. They'll easily make a, something visible or make it so they can collide with things. It's just each one of these different components you can add to a game object can add new features and abilities for them to have. And you can even create your custom ones by writing code in your, your programming languages and attaching that code to these objects as a component. Now we'll go into that further later. But just remember for now that game objects can have 
you know, they all have to have a transform component. They can have more components, and you can you can add them or remove them as needed. So, let's see, is there? That's the other thing I want to cover. So, you make some changes to your scene if you want to save it. What you do is just go to File, Save Scene, or just Control S. It'll bring up Sample Project Folder Assets, and inside the assets, it'll save it as a .unity file. And you give it a name. So I just go Sample Scene and Save. When you do that, this Project Folder, this um, window, will have your sample scene show up in it. You can use this little slider to change how it looks. I like the look to be like that. So this is the sample scene. And what happens is, is when you've now saved that scene, if you right-click on your Assets folder and click Show and Explore, it's actually a file that's being stored within your project. All of your project files that you'll be using for Unity are stored within your Assets folder. Also, with inside the project folder, you can create new folders. So, uh, scripts, just for the sake of the name. And inside that, you can create all sorts of other custom assets. Things like materials, prefabs, shaders, C-sharp scripts, animation controls, just a bunch of different ones. So, sample script. And there you go. Now you have also a C-sharp file, which is, this is the programming files that you can use to make things do certain things. But we'll get more into how the scripts work later. Right now it's just navigating the interface and understanding a little bit how it works. The console is, this console window is used to display information about, like, uh, you can, when you're doing code stuff, you can print stuff to this console for testing. It helps you figure out what's going right and what's going wrong with your code. And then, there's the inspector window, which tells you about the current object you have selected. It'll usually show you current information about what's in your hierarchy, what you have selected, or current information about what you have selected within your project folder. So the inspector is useful for letting you know about the different assets that you have within your project, or the different game objects that you have in your current scene. And with that, I believe that covers most of the overview I had in mind for showing you this. Um, just a couple last things, once again, you can create a, a bunch of different game objects in Empty, which just has the transform component, or you can create other types of game objects, and those ones will just come in with other components pre-attached for you. They're just basically like presets of different things that you'd find useful, like a cube, and the cube would have a box collider component, a cube mesh filter component, and a cube's, the cube also has a mesh renderer component attached. And we'll get into a little bit more detail what you can do with components, a little like what the different components are for and what they do and how they're useful and a little bit later in one of the later videos. With that, I believe that's everything I wanted to cover in this first video. So just for an assignment, go ahead and load up Unity, make a new project, practice moving around the windows, um, try to get the game, scene, console, um, Oh yeah, there's one last window I need to tell you about. The game window. When you click play to run, this window is going to come up. And it will show you the game that's currently in action. So if I move my scene down here, and I start moving objects within the game, this will show you the live update of what the game is seeing. And because I have this other game object in here, that's what's making the Unity logo show up right in the middle. One of the other important things to note with the game window, which I almost forgot to cover, is you can be in play mode to see what's going on by clicking this play button up here. And when you do that, you'll see what the game is acting like when all the things are running together and stuff. You can pause that play at any time, and you can make it run one frame at a time if you really want to which can be useful for testing certain things. But if you do make changes to your scene while you're in play mode, say you right click and you want to delete one of the game objects that you've made, 
So once again, you right-click to delete, or you can make a duplicate. While you're in play mode, that data won't be saved. It's going to rebring everything back to how it was before you were in play mode. So, yeah, basically, as for the first exercise, just practice moving around the different windows. Practice bringing in some game objects. Try a couple of the different ones and see what, you know, just play around with them and see if they do anything special. We'll, we'll get into more of them later, just the ones that you really need to know in order to get your audio stuff to work, really. But honestly, most of these ones don't even... There's only like one of these custom pre-built ones that has that. I might I might show you guys like just how to make the audio stuff work. Oh, there's one more thing in the navigation. I, just, I should really just write this all down. Maybe I'll do that in a little bit. But say you've got an audio asset you want to bring into Unity. Now Unity is pretty good about accepting different file types. I believe it works with AIF files, WAV files, MP3 files, and some other files as well. I know it doesn't work with MIDI. Um, MIDI is a bit old school for a more modern engine. But I believe there's a plugin you can find if you really want to do MIDI. But what you do to bring in an asset is you just click on the asset and you drag and you drop it in. Boom. Now you have that audio source within Unity. So I'm just going to go ahead and when you have the audio asset in here, you can actually just click play down here in the after you have it selected, just play down here in the bottom right hand corner and it will play you a preview of the, of the sound that you're going to get out of it. As you can notice, when you're inside that preview window, you can click around to preview different spots. You can also click to loop, and you can click to play. Uh, yeah, so once again, the exercise is the practice moving around the windows. Try bringing in an audio asset into the project folder. We won't get it into the game yet. We'll do that in like one of the next ones. Um, try, try making some objects, and try... Um, creating, you know, the ones with the different kinds of custom components on them. And just, just play around with it and just get used to navigating inside of Unity because, you know, that's a lot of stuff we just covered. And then once you feel comfortable with all the things that we just went over, watch the next video. Thanks so much.